Hello everyone, I am Ranjit Kaur, Assistant Professor Political Science at the Department of Humanities from the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. Dear learners, today we are going to start with making of the Indian Constitution. As we know, India is the largest democracy and a sovereign nation. India has the longest constitution in the world, which has a preamble, 470 articles, which has been divided into 22 parts and 8 schedules. It has also been supplemented by 105 amendments. How we have designed this constitution? To frame a constitution, we require a constituent assembly. So, we will be starting with the demand for constituent assembly. For the first time, Gopal Krishna Gokhale raised his views that India should have its own laws. Later on, Gandhiji in 1922 declared that the Indians destiny could be decided by India itself. And so we should have rights to make our own laws, not any other foreign body. Formally, for the first time in 1934, the idea to form a constituent assembly was given by M. N. Roy. Who was M. N. Roy? M. N. Roy was a politician, a revolutionary and a communist thinker. He has contributed to the formation of Communist Party of India. He also helped Russian government and the Chinese government to establish communist government there. But no one heard his demand. Followed by this, in 1935, Indian National Congress for the first time demanded for the Constituent Assembly. Same voice was raised by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in year 1938 that India will have its own constituent assembly and they will be drafting their own rules. Finally, in 1940, the British government accepted the demand. Viceroy Lord Linthengo declared August offer. Now the question arises that why did Britishers accepted the demand? Because in 1939, Second World War broke out and the Britishers made India party to the war as a British Empire without informing INC and Muslim League. That made both the parties reluctant to join the war. But U uh, UK was fighting with the alliances and they wanted Indian leader support. Japan was also approaching India from the borders and so they accepted the demand for constituent assembly. What was this August offer? August offer which was being designed by Lord Linton Go was an offer that the Viceroy of India will be expanding the executive council number of members of Indian will be increased and the minority weightage will also be provided so that they can draft the constitution of India. Finally, the crisp proposal on the framing of Indian constitution came in India in 1942. Lord Stadford Crisp was the in charge of the crisp proposal. He came out with the proposal that after the end of the World War, Constituent Assembly will be formed, which will be drafting the Constitution of India. But Muslim League rejected the proposal. Why? Because they wanted two autonomous states, State of Pakistan and State of India to be separated. Even INC did not like the proposal because the princely states were also being given autonomy to have their independent states. INC proceeded for Quit India movement and the CRISP mission was totally a failure. After the end of 
the Second World War, which ended in September 1945, new government was formed in England, that was the Labour Party. They took an initiative that a constituent assembly will be formed, which will design the constitution and the destiny of India, under which they appointed a cabinet mission. They arrived in India in March 24, 1946. The cabinet mission consisted of three members, Lord Petrick Lawrence, Sir Stadford Crisp, he was the person in charge of the uh, Crisp mission, and A.V. Alexander. Three members body, they visited India. The major question on these three people was to how to combine INC and Muslim League, how to solve differences between the INC and Muslim League. Muslims were demanding their separate state, state of Pakistan, whereas India wanted one complete state. They failed to come to the conclusion, but then too, they don't want to return back without making or giving any solution. Finally, Cabinet Mission published his plan on May 16, 1945. They decided to form a loose center under which they wanted to have a separate constitution for the Pakistan, that is Baluchistan, for uh, Punjab, Northwest frontiers, whereas a separate constitution for Assam, Bengal, and also a center with some of the powers, which was definitely not being accepted by both the parties. 1946 had in mind of a loose center which automatically divides into Hindustan, Pakistan and Prince Listan. Though this proposal was not accepted by Indian National Congress because they wanted one united Hindustan. Then later on, since the cabinet mission wants to form the government, so an interim government was being formed. Gandhiji wanted that India should not get divided so he approached Jinnah. Jinnah believed that if he is being given the chance to form the government, India will not be divided. But this proposal was not accepted by Jawaharlal Nehru and Sardar Vallabhai Patel. As a result, Jinnah declared Direct Action Day. In August 1946, war broke out. On 16th of August 1946, communal riots triggered across India. In three days, for more than 4,000 people died in Bengal. And as a result, there was a need to form an interim government. And finally, the interim government was formed. And in December 1946, they met for the first time. Before this, there was an election to the Constituent Assembly. Let us talk about the composition of Constituent Assembly. The total strength of Constituent Assembly was decided to be 389 members. Every one seat represented 10 lakh citizens out of which 296 seats were allotted to British India and 93 to the princely states. 
the India practically was divided into British India, which was under the control of Britishers, and the princely states, which were being given autonomous status by the Britishers. Because after 1858, they did not follow the policy of annexation. So these princely states were being given autonomous status, so they were running according to their rules and regulations. Every provinces and princely states were allotted seats according to the proportion to their population, so proportional representation. The seats for British India were divided among Muslims, Sikhs and general. As I said, there was no election through Adel franchisee, so the members of the Muslims, Sikhs and general were being chosen from their provincial legislative assemblies. Who all were the members of provincial legislative assemblies? Those who were being chosen from their regions, provinces. At that time, under the Act of 1935, only the 10% people have the rights to give vote. And these 10 persons were those who pay taxes and the ones those who have property. So those people have selected the members of Provincial Legislative Assembly. Further, the Muslims in the Provincial Legislative Assembly has chosen Muslim representatives. Similarly, the Sikhs, those who were there in the Provincial Legislative Assembly, has chosen Sikh representatives. And the rest, the general, that means the Hindu, and the Hindus represented Jain, uh, Parsis, and all other Hindu communities. They were being chosen by the leftover people. The representatives from each community were being elected by voting at the Provincial Legislative Assembly. The heads of the princely state nominated their members. So it was being said that princely states will be nominating. So the elections were both elected and nominated. So you could see elected and nominated members in the constituent assembly. The outcome of the elections was INC secured 208 seats, Muslim League 73 seats, small groups they have won 15 seats, the Constituent Assembly has the representation of all the minorities. You could see Hindus, Muslims, Sikh, Parsi, Anglo-Indians, SCST and women representatives. Princely state decided to stay away from the, the Constituent Assembly and so the seats remained vacant. However, after the acceptance of the Mountbatten Plan of 3rd June, 1947, most of the princely states joined. Now, what was the Mountbatten plan? Why did princely state refuse earlier? And how the partition of India was done and two sovereign states were formed, India and Pakistan. We will be dealing with this in the next module.